Reuniclus might be getting banned from the Gen 5 OU metagame, but why? Reuniclus has been a top tier choice in Gen 5 OU for a very long time, over a decade at this point. Reuniclus has the ability Magic Guard, which is one of Pokemon's strongest abilities, granting a complete immunity to all indirect damage. Reuniclus can sidestep Sandstorm damage, Hazard damage, Status damage, effects like Leech Seed. So many common ways to break through and eliminate Pokemon are are just ineffective on Reuniclus. On top of this, Reuniclus also has pretty fantastic stats considering the power of its ability, with a whopping 125 base special attack and a respectable 110 base HP. And Reuniclus has a fantastic move pull on top of this, with Calm Mind being its primary boosting option, allowing it to snowball and be a team's primary win condition. Oftentimes, Recover for immediate healing is fantastic, and Psychic and Psyshock are great stab options. Focus Blast gives you something to hit Tyranitar with. Runiclus can go in many different directions and fit on various team paces. Fast-paced teams sometimes opt for Trick Room, which is an effect that inverts the speed mechanic for five turns, so the slower Pokemon will go first temporarily. Since Runiclus is very slow, Trick Room can turn it into a monstrous threat. Just a simple Trick Room 3 attack set can be a fantastic late-game cleaner on aggressive team. Runiclus can also equip a Life Orb and be totally immune to the recoil damage, enhancing a set like this even further. And on defensive teams like slower paced, balancey sand teams or even hail teams, Reuniclus can exist as a form of counterplay against Scald and other status effects due to its immunity to their damage and a win condition, acting both as a sturdy defensive piece and a team's win condition at once. The one thing keeping Reuniclus from being too crazy is the presence of Tyranitar in the metagame. Tyranitar is able to trap Reuniclus with Pursuit, threaten it with Crunch, and pretty reliably eliminate this powerful Pokemon. Even though Tyranitar is vulnerable to Focus Blast, which is times four super effective, Tyranitar commonly runs a Chopple Berry for this very reason, to halve incoming damage from a fighting type attack, keeping it safe. And Runiclus is a bit slow, Focus Blast is inaccurate, so this is a pretty unreliable way to answer Tyranitar. But the thing about Tyranitar is that it has a limited amount of health and a limited amount of things it can do per game. You can't recover with Tyranitar. Tyranitar can check one important psychic type, but then it's probably going to get broken through and eliminated. So that's where the concept of psychic spam is born. What if you run a bunch of Pokemon that lure in Tyranitar, Alakazam, Reuniclus, and Latios? All three of these Pokemon are checked by Tyranitar's pursuit, but Tyranitar can't answer all of them, and eventually Tyranitar is going to be invited in by these threats, broken down, eliminated, and then the rest of them will roam free with their main counter now out of the picture. Psychic spam, or Psy spam for sure, short is one of the strongest archetypes in Gen 5 OU. These teams often stack spikes and stealth rock as much as possible to bolster their threats like Runiclus and Alakazam that invite in defensive switches and just overwhelm the enemy. And because they are completely immune to all these hazards and status and sand and all these effects that are central to the metagame, they're fine but everything else suffers. There are some ways to counteract this team style. Choice Scarf Scizor is a popular one. With a Choice Scarf, Scizor can outrun Alakazam and threaten it with U-turn and and Pursuit, and Runiclus is obviously threatened by Stab U-Turn and the potential of Pursuit to trap them as they switch out. Jirachi is also a response I've seen, with its resistance to Psychic and neutrality to fighting. Jirachi can substitute and Calm Mind, matching Runiclus's boosts and eventually winning that 1v1. But those Pokemon can suffer in other matchups, and Runiclus definitely has a bit of a stranglehold on this metagame. It is something you need an answer for. In a world where there's like 50 things that you need an answer for, it's a very high power level metagame. Politoed is often forced to run Encore to at least have some form of counterplay against a Calm Mind boosting Runiclus, but even that is unreliable. It has limited PP. It can be played around long term by the Runiclus player. It is generally a bit difficult to fit phasing mechanics or anti-boost sweeping mechanics on your team in this generation because of the fast pace. You kind of just want to do things quickly. Fitting something like Roar or Haze is a bit difficult. And Runiclus is a Pokemon that can cover its weakness pretty easily with teammates. It is a very limited set of things that actually answer it, and it's not hard to just fill those gaps, bolstering Reuniclus to an absurd level. And often what happens in Gen 5 is it'll come down to a Reuniclus versus Reuniclus mirror match. So some players believe that banning Reuniclus will help to alleviate some of the matchup variants present in this metagame and maybe ease the restrictiveness of team building, where if you don't need an answer for Reuniclus, you can have some more breathing room against other threats you need to answer. Answer, perhaps.
perhaps. It's a start, maybe, in a pretty unbalanced format with a lot of issues. And keep in mind, this is a suspect test. So it is a democratic vote. Renaclus is not banned yet. It's just being suspect tested. So players are going to vote on whether they want to ban it or not. And you can take part in this too if you want to vote yourself by playing on the Gen 5 OU ladder and qualifying with the minimum rating requirement of 1600 and the GXE requirement of 85 on a new alt with this prefix. If you're interested, I might do this myself. Might give it a go. Bit of Gen 5 gaming. If I do qualify for this, I'm not sure what I would personally vote for. I don't know. I would have to think about it. I would have to take a look at the current metagame, see what's happening. See exactly examples of Reuniclus being problematic. I've used the Pokemon before, I kind of enjoy it. I think of it as an iconic Gen 5 Pokemon, but it has annoyed me in the past when trying to build teams for sure. Gen 5 team building feels more restrictive than any other generation in my eyes. It feels like there are a lot of auto includes and a lot of options you need on your team that restrict creativity. It's not to say there's no creative teams in Gen 5. There has been a lot of innovation recently and there are a lot of interesting stuff propping up like the Rise of Hail and options like Lapras seeing use, but Often those teams are actually like specific counter teams for an enemy and it's kind of a matchup gamble where you're hoping that they bring something specific and you punish that really hard but you are sacrificing your strength in other matchups that could be game losing. And so it's kind of crazy the amount of matchup variance in Gen 5 and how a game can often feel decided in the team preview. That might be a bit of an exaggeration. There's always ways to outplay. There's always ways to pilot. But Gen 5 is a metagame where matchups are very skewed. And something like Reuniclus in the right matchup is just indestructible. It is interesting that Gen 5 is the only old gen that really sees Pokemon bans and suspect tests still happening. Most old generations generations are very settled. Even like Gen 6 and 7 don't have Pokemon suspect tests happening to this day. But Gen 5 OU just has that reputation of being the most divisive metagame ever. Even more so than Gen 9, I would say. The fact that it's been around for over a decade and we're still doing stuff. I think that Gen 9 will settle sooner than Gen 5 has. Gen 5 still has not settled, then how long has it been? But I'm kind of glad they're doing this. I've always thought they should just try stuff more often. People are very afraid to ruin old metagames and mess with them too much. And they're afraid that fluctuating metagame shifts like a Pokemon ban will ruin, uh, you know, an upcoming tournament or something. I don't know. I think if you're too careful, you don't do enough. Metagame problems that have been plaguing the format for years and years and years will just never get solved. So they recently did the Cloister Suspect. Most people wanted Cloister banned because of how much it skewed matchups in a similar way. So that's gone now. Cloister is out of there. And Cloister is a Pokemon that put a real strain on things. So that has improved the format, I think. And now Reuniclus is under fire. I think Reuniclus is a much more divisive one, though. Some people really like Reuniclus and what it adds. They think it's manageable. I would say it is more manageable and more reasonable than something like Cloyster. And Cloyster is definitely a more matchup swingy Pokemon than Reuniclus is. But Reuniclus is a stronger Pokemon overall with a very solid and consistent performance across the board. It can fit on many different kinds of teams. So that is also something to consider. It's powerful and dominant in a different way than Cloyster was. What do you think, folks? Does Reuniclus deserve to get thrown to the wayside and banned? Do you think that Smogon bans everything and they are whiny babies and they should simply adapt? That's a more intelligent uh, viewpoint that I would aspire to personally. And what would you like me to talk about next? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you for watching.